So I have just built this AI workflow here, which takes your sales call transcripts and automatically turns them into proposals, which you can send straight off to your clients within seconds. I used to run an agency and my God, I used to spend hours and hours and hours creating proposals, but this completely changes the game and will save you hundreds of hours if you run any sort of business, which uh, creates proposals for clients. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how it works. Plus, I'm gonna give you a template of this workflow so you can download it for free and start using it within seconds. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's have a look at what is happening here. So first of all, you're gonna have your sales call and that sales call is gonna be automatically transcribed whether you're using Google Meets or whether you're using um, Zoom. And uh, in basically all scenarios, you have the option to upload that automatically after the meeting to Google Drive. Now, this is the file which is the transcript of this, you know, uh, example call that I have. And you can see we talked about a lot of things from, um, you know, let's talk about your current website, what's not working, oh, where do I start? It's slow, cranky, blah, blah, blah. There you can see I've got a transcript and that is uploaded to Google Drive. It doesn't really matter where. I've created my own folder for this. So when that is uploaded to um, Google Docs, we are going to automatically find it. Now, the tool that we're using here is called NA10. It is fantastic for building AI automations, AI agents, uh, just the best out there at the moment. Um, so here, don't worry about this. This is just a manual way of doing it. But we are automatically finding when a file has been created on Google Drive, and we're going to get that file. We're going to get the transcript. Then what we're doing, I'll come back to this a little bit later, um, is extracting all the information from that transcript. Um, then what we're going to need to do is get information not about the sales call, but about our business. So things that don't change within our business from sales call to sales call, such as the name of the business doesn't change, our pricing doesn't change with every single sales call, um, the, the like head salesperson or who they should speak to in order to close this deal, that doesn't change, things like this. So we're uh, extracting information about our business. Now you could hard code this in, but if you want to make it kind of more future proof, then you just uh, have a file. We can see here, I've got uh, agency details docs. And if I open that up, you can see in here, it's just got a, uh, a few bits of information about the business. So um, it's taking information from the sales school, taking information about the business. And we are going to create a new folder within um, this Google Drive here. You can see here, I've got one here. And it's going to copy a file um, and it's going to move that file into the new folder. And that file that it's copying is going to be this one here. So we are creating two different proposals. We are creating a Word proposal, so in like, you know, uh, Google Docs and a Google Slides proposal. So you've got like a visual one and a text one. Um, so first of all, we are copying our template. So if we go over to Drive, we can see we've got a proposal template. And if we have a look at this, we can see here, this is a proposal, but you can see it's got these placeholders here. And we're going to touch on these a little bit later, but it's got placeholders in it at the moment. So it's going to copy that. And then what we're doing here, and this is the really important part, is we are updating a document and we are finding and replacing all of those fields. So where we saw earlier, the client name and the agency name, if we go back over here, we can see here, client name, agency name, we are simply replacing those um, with the information that we're getting from the previous step. And we're doing the same thing with the Google Slides, so like the visual side of things here, is that we've got this template here, which again has those placeholders, and all we're doing is we are simply going in here and using a find and replace to replace all of those. And voila, there we have it. You have your proposals, your two proposals, created within seconds of the sales call finishing, put in its own folder within Google Drives, and there's all neat and you can just go through it, double check it, fill in any other information you need to fill in and you can send it off, literally saving you hours. Okay, so let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. So um, I'm gonna have this workflow here for you to download. You can go to the link in the description and you'll be able to download this for free um, and get using it you know, straight away. So um, as I said, this part here is just for testing. So you can really forget about this. This is just so um, we can you know, get a test transcript. So when I was creating it, we could make it work without having to keep uploading new documents to Google Drive. So um, within here, all we're doing is we are seeing for changes in a specific folder and I'm selecting my specific folder and that folder is the proposal generator. In fact, let me delete what we've got in here at the moment and then I can do a walkthrough and we can see it happening in real time. So I'm gonna delete all of these, we don't need those. We just need um, the 
agency docs. So that's some details about our agency. And you can see in here, let's have a look. We've got the name of the agency, when it was founded, where it's headquartered, the website. Um, you probably already have this information somewhere. Hopefully you're feeding this information into um, you know, ChatGPT or Claude, whatever you use when you speak to it, so it knows more context about your business anyway. So hopefully you already have this. Um, then what else we need? We need the uh, template for the slides. Now I have just stolen this from Google. This is one of like the like defaults that it has. Um, it looks okay. Um, if I was doing this for real, I definitely would spend some time changing this, make it look a little bit nicer, you know, putting my logo in it, put maybe the date on every slide um, and change things around a little bit. Um, so go ahead and create this for yourself, copy it from, you know, the Google Slides defaults. Um, all you need to do when creating the template is um, swap in these fields here. Now you can, um, you don't have to have these curly brackets here. You can do whatever you want. The reason that I'm putting curly brackets around it is that it's pretty uncommon in normal text to have two curly brackets because you just don't use them in normal English, right? You could have like speech marks, but the thing is in normal English, we sometimes use speech marks in normal bits, normal bits of speech, right? So we want to make sure that we're only capturing things we want to replace, which means we have to use a symbol which is fairly unique so that we're only replacing things that need to be replaced, right? So we're going through and wherever we need to put in specific information, then we are putting in kind of these identifiers here. Um, they're very similar. If you've ever built emails before, it's very similar what you do there with like the, the email the recipient's first name and their last name and things like that. Very similar. Uh, and we're just going through every slide. And as you can see, uh, we've got all of those um, just changed. Okay. And we basically do the same on the text version as well. We just go through and just change wherever we want specific, specific information. We change it with those placeholders. And those placeholders are what we're going to use a little bit later to actually pass in the right information. And so we can walk through this and see this happening in real time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a transcript to this Google Drive folder here. Uh, so we're going to be able to watch this happen in real time. So there it is. And if we come over to our NA10 uh, workflow, we're going to click Run on this first step. And if we open it up and we scroll down, it has got that correct file of the website discovery cool. There we go. Okay, so that is getting the correct one. And to get the actual file, we run this step in order to get the transcript, which is getting the information within the file. So basically all of the text that's in there. Okay, so we've got the transcript. Then what we're doing here, all I'm doing is uh, this just combines um, these two fields here so that this all works, whether I'm running a test or whether I'm actually running it for reals. Uh, so this doesn't really work. Uh, this doesn't really matter. It does work. It doesn't really matter. You can take this out if you want to, but it just allows you to have that test flow. So we'll run that. Okay, so this is the first bit of AI that's being used here. And what we're doing is using this extractor node here. You can find it just by going extractor, information extractor. And we just need to hook it up to an AI model. I'm using Open Router here. And I think I'm using, yeah, GPT 4.1 mini. It doesn't really matter too much which model you use because we're not needing like a load of intelligence. If you test this and you find out that the values that you get out of this node here aren't great, then you can play around with this, but it should be fine. And now is a good time for me to mention that if you are implementing AI into your business or you are selling AI services, then I have a mastermind which breaks out everything from learning how the basics of AI work Let's have a look at the classroom to um, over 2000 different templates, which you can download and start using right away a full course on NA10 and how you can go from zero to a hero in NA10. Also a, a course on how you can create your first 100K selling AI services. I'll leave a link in the description. You can go check that out if you'd like to. Anyway, back to it. OK, so if we open this up. OK, so within this extractor tool, what we're doing is we're specifying what information we want to pull out of uh, the transcripts here that we uploaded. And you can see we are pulling out the name of the client, the name of the project, the business description, the target audience. And for each of these, we are giving NA10 or the AI uh, uh, the LLM a description of what that thing is. The longer and the more detailed the description, the better results you're going to get. So these are quite brief here, but um, you can see here, um, I've uh, made this a little more specific. So I've said here, uh, target audience, and this is going to be inserted into a sentence, so make the grammar correct for this. Because previously, it was giving me an entire sentence, and where I wanted to insert that target audience into a longer sentence, in fact, we have a look, 
Um, do, 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 do. Let's go up. I think it's here. Um, where's target audience? There it is. Target audience is in the middle of a sentence. And if it started with a capital letter and ended with a full stop, it just wouldn't make sense. So we have to specify certain things like this. And you can see here, I've gone through and done business goals, pain points, tech stack, deliverables, timeline. And some of these are required, some of them aren't required. So all of the things which are really important, such as the client name, you want to make them required. The things which are less important, they don't have to be um, required. And I'm not gonna go through all of these, you can download it and see these for yourself, but obviously change it as you need to for you, your use case. So let's run this step here, and that's gonna extract all of those bits of information. Give it a second. Okay, and if we open that up, we can see we've got a load of information on the right-hand side from the client name, project name, business description, target audience, etc. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do basically the same thing we did here, but with our own details for the agency. So we're gonna get this, and what this is doing is it's simply getting the information that we have stored within uh, this file here, the agency details, which is this one here. Now you could, as I said before, hard code this. Technically, it's a little bit better to do it this way uh, because it means that if you wanna change anything, you don't have to change everything within this workflow, you just change it within a Google Doc, which is maybe easier for your team to interact with, or maybe you use this doc in lots of different AI processes, so rather than having to change it in every single workflow, you just change it in one place. So um, all we're doing here is just getting basic things like agency name, agency contact name, contact email, contact phone number, number of clients we have, and it's outputting that information which we can use in a later step. Okay, cool, so now what we're doing here is we are creating a new folder within Google Drive um, to house the information about this new prospect. So you can see here, no uh, far folders within this folder here, but if I, uh, let's actually open up, and we can see that I'm just gonna call the folder the name of the client name. So I'm getting this from here, and client name, and I've just dragged that in there. So if we execute this, give it a second, and then if we go over to Google Drive, uh, maybe we have to reload, oh, there we go. It's come and it's given it the name of the business or of the, um, of the prospect, which is Urban Nest Interiors. Okay, so this is gonna be empty. There's nothing in here at the moment, uh, but let's run the next thing. So next, what we're doing is copying a file. So we are copying the template, and this is the word template to start with. And uh, what we're doing is we're simply specifying which file we want to copy. So the one called proposal template and the name that we're gonna give it is again, getting the client name from this step here and just putting website proposal on the end of it. Okay, so let's run this. Um, and actually that's gonna create it in the main folder. So we can see it's not in here. Um, it's actually here. Uh, actually, no, it's not. Where is it? There it is, just created, there it is. But then the next step is gonna move it into this folder here. So let's run that. There we go. And that's gonna move it. So if we go over here, um, it, sometimes there's a couple of second lag, but if we open this up, there we go, it's now in there and we're, all, we're organizing our files nicely. Okay, so this is one of the most important parts here. And what we're doing is we are using a Google Docs node and we are updating a document. And then what we're doing is on the actions, um, if we go down to the bottom, we can see we can add an action and our action can be um, several different things, find and replace or insert. And what we're doing here is using the find and replace and we're just adding a load of these. Uh, let's delete that one. And uh, what we're doing is we're going through and we're finding every single one of these places where we've used a placeholder. So let's find that. So um, client name, agency name, date. And we are simply going in and finding the placeholder, such as client name, agency name, and project name, and I think I've got date, yep, date there as well, and replacing that with the correct information. So for the client name, that is coming from the sales cool data extractor, and that's getting the client name. For the agency name, that is in fact coming from the agency info extractor. And for the date, wherever the date is, here, uh, we are just using a, you know, a little bit of uh, uh, JavaScript to get the date now and formatting it in a certain way. And the important thing to know here is that we're saying to NA10, uh, the document to update is the one that we've just created. So from the previous step where we moved it, just grab the ID so it knows that we need to update that file which we just moved. Okay, so um, if we have a look, we can see here that at the moment, it's got a load of placeholders in it. But if we go ahead and run this step, 
Um, there we go, it's running. And I think it just takes a couple of seconds, yeah, very quick to run. Now, if we go over here and open this up, we can see now that there are no placeholders. It's all been replaced with the actual name of the client, um, the name of the uh, example uh, web development agency, the date, and everything else has been filled in as well. Okay, so that is the uh, like the docs version of the proposal. Now, we're basically doing the same thing with the uh, Google Slides. So this first thing here is just going to copy the proposal that we've got here with all the um, placeholders. So let's do that. And um, once we do that, we'll be able to see that in this main folder. Um, it will appear any second. Uh, come on, there we go, there it is. Then we are going to move that into the new folder. Uh, if we open this up, give it a second, and we'll see that here in the new folder, there we go. And we probably could give it a better name so they just don't have the same identical names, but I haven't done, you can make that change yourself. Then we are doing this step here, which is identical, except from um, in the actual like top part of the node, we can run this replace text, we don't have to make it an action. Um, and we can just add a load of these here. So basically the same thing, just a few different buttons that you have to that you have to press. And we are uh, finding the placeholder and simply replacing it. Now, the one other thing you have to do on um, Google Slides is you have to say which slide this uh, placeholder is on. So this is where this part here comes into use. And simply all we can do here um, is click here and we get a drop down of all of these slides and you can see I've got a different option for each one of these slides and you simply select which one. They don't have nice names, which is a kind of pain. So you do have to go, okay, let's um, go on the fourth page and I have to put in the pain points. Okay, fine. So let me go over here and I go one, two, three, four. Okay, click on the fourth one, then put in the placeholder of pain points, right? So you have to specify which page the placeholder is on. But apart from that, it's identical. We just drag and drop the information in from the uh, the previous tools. So the, from the sales cool extractor and from the agency info extractor. And then we simply run it. And we will see that very quickly that runs. And now if we open this one up here, we can see there's have no placeholders in it whatsoever. Uh, we have just got you know the name of the client, the name of our business, the date, and there we have it. Now there are several things you might want to change. For instance, you might want to add a notification on the end here, which you know sends a Slack message to you or to your team that says, hey, the proposal's been created. Here's a link to it, go check it out. Uh, you probably don't want to send this directly to a client just because you know you at the moment we can't trust AI 100%, still does hallucinate in some situations. So you probably wouldn't want to send it directly, but um, adding a little notification. I would also highly recommend going through and just checking it because there will be some things where it perhaps doesn't pick up on fully. Um, let's go through and have a look and see. Um, yep, okay, so here we can see payment terms. Um, this is not correct. So it looks like that in the, um, the sales call that we had, we didn't talk about payment terms. And we don't have this information either within the sales call transcript or within our agency document. So it says it's not specified or it doesn't know. So you might have to go in and change some things um, it's not going to do 100% of the work. Um, or actually, you know, you can just make this workflow here smarter so that it does 100% of the work. You could put in an agent here, which after this workflow goes through, checks both of these, sees if it's got any information which doesn't make sense. And then you can, you know, go and look back through different documents to find that information, for example. So you can make it fill in absolutely everything if you make the um, this workflow more complicated, or you can just go through, let AI do, um, you know, like 95% of the work like we have done here, and then just update this manually yourself, whichever works best for you. If you're creating a lot of proposals, then perhaps you want to make this smarter and put the work up front into creating this. But if you're only creating, you know, like five a week or so, then, you know, spending five minutes just updating some bits and just checking it through because you're going to need to check it anyway is probably okay. And there we go. That is how you can take your sales call transcripts and automatically create proposals for them, both in, you know, a beautiful slides format, but also in like a document text format and how you can create those proposals and save so much of your time.
So that is it from this video. I hope you have found it useful. If you have, please do drop a like. If you've got any comments, come over to the community. Link will be down in the description. I'll also leave some other links down below to some like uh, resources and some freebies for you guys. Um, but yeah, leave a comment if you've got any questions and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.